and we're off. Uh, well, my mission today is to get some free awesomeness. And uh, Mikey has brought over some awesomeness, in the name of Thomas Lang, and uh, to get some real drums going on here. <laughs> and uh, there is the artist himself. Hey, guys. Uh, I didn't have to pay him a cent. This is like the triple scale, probably one of the most expensive musicians in Los Angeles. I just got some unbelievable Mondo stuff for free. <laughs> exactly. Good on you, dude. Good on you. Hey, would you like a cup of coffee? I'll go and get some coffee yeah, yeah, there, yeah, okay? Yeah. You know. If, if he played a little bit better, I would have made him the coffee, but he's, you know. <laughs> nah, he played great, and, and I have already made him two coffees. And uh, here I have a gigantic Marshall amplifier. Now, before you tell me this, Stuart, what's, what is this? What happens here? This is the Sacred Grove. Okay. And um, uh, it is a place where magic things happen, and music falls from the trees like fruit. So you invite musicians around? This, this is the world's largest collection of the most crap instruments. I discovered eBay, and... Um, and I just got the cheap one of everything, the cheapest. But they're really kind of cool. Some of them actually are pretty fancy. And you can play all these? Uh, sort of. That's not a trumpet. That's a trumpet, huh? <laughs> huh? How do you like that? I can sort of play them. <laughs> saxophones and all the other ones there. This here is a little drum set. That's for like when you get your acoustic guitar, your folky guys come over here who can't play like above the volume of a whisper. So that's <laughs> what's over there. And this is the big amps for people who are hard of hearing. I got the Vox AC30, a classic here, a little Fender Champ, that uh, Roland there, kid come in here one day, I just, I've already told you the story, but yep. I'll tell it again for your camera, kid comes in, looks at that and says, this here, man, this is a 1978 Strat, man, where did you find this thing? Well, I bought it in a store in 1978. <laughs> Sting got one just like it, he still plays it, and I still play my one too. Like on the same day, I got this Roland amp here. I've got your Gallon Kruger. I actually use that little Vox 15 watt a lot more. Voila, the drums, including the snare, which I've been keeping on the shelf all this time just because I revere it so much. But as of today, since I got the big dog in, I thought I'd give him. Thomas, we should steal this snare drum. I reckon a few bob on eBay. At least 20 bucks. You think? 20 yeah. bucks? Well, for struggling musicians. And just in case, I have brass instruments everywhere. That's the great thing about jazz. Is that that actual was you know in, in jazz, that is actually music, mm. and because you know it might have sounded to you like wrong notes because you're not sophisticated enough to appreciate the alternative harmony. And this is the uh, percussion rack, the gong rack. <laughs> Including everybody's favorite. The swing gong. Good party piece, that. Big Ampeg gave me this bass. Stanley Clark calls up Ampeg, says send Stuart a bass. Amp, there it is. This Tom here is an ancient version. This is a E flat. It kind of comes apart here, so I have to be careful with it. And since it's fragile, it's like a tiny valve trombone. So I got myself a new one in China. Okay. It's like cheap and cheerful, but it plays pretty good. And tell me about this trumpet. Oh, this trumpet over here. This is my daddy's trumpet. My daddy got this when he was a jazz musician. And he raised me to be a jazz musician, which is why I'm not. <laughs> uh, and he bought it when he was... Uh, 
I'm terrible with numbers, I think either 24 or 28 years old. He was a young musician. He was a session player for eight years, playing jazz with the likes with both of the different uh, Dorsey brothers, Harry James, Glenn Miller, uh, Erskine Hawkins. He busted out of Alabama with Erskine Hawkins. Mm -hmm. He was the first white musician to ever be seen with a black band, black big band. And this is a Coprine uh, con, very fancy for its day. And he got it. He must, you know, he was a young professional stud musician, and this was his axe. Then the war broke out, and he joined the military intelligence, became a CIA man. But he left me this trumpet. Cool. And I, I would play it, except <coughs> trumpet is hard. And this is the uh, the Hammond. This is the Hammond. I got this Hammond for fifty bucks on eBay. Wow. 50 bucks. Yeah, it was up in Northern California. My sister happened to live nearby. This is a 1948 M3. This is the organ that they played uh, Green Onions on. And look at this. This is something the kids will appreciate. Like starting this thing up, it's actually not a synthesizer. It's a physical. It makes an instant. It actually has a thing in there that makes a sound that gets microphone. It's actually. It has electricity, but it actually is a physical sound. And there's a difference when you haven't got MIDI going. Listen to how I have to start up. That's the getting the fans going. It's like starting a Volkswagen. Yin, 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 yin. Now I can hold this button down here. Now when it's up to speed, then I release that and press the other button. Now I have to wait for the valve amplifier to come on. <laughs> come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on, wakey, wakey. Come on. Come on. There she is. Here she comes. box here yeah. is a Leslie cabinet. And uh, once again, they do all the stuff within computers, electronic. But this physically has speakers revolving in there. There's bass speakers and treble speakers. And they go around in circles. I turn the engine off over here. And that gives you a very distinctive sound from that period. And um, it's actually physical. And uh, what the MIDI guys don't get is that there's latency with MIDI. There's a gap. On this thing, it's completely tight. It's like you could cut, you know, you could cut steak with that sharp. What we got over here? This is the timpani. actually use this instrument, you use it very carefully. You get the pitch you need, what key am I in, I'm in A. Okay, I know that's the note that I need. Yep. You know, it's a, it's a specialty thing. It's not something you like freak out and enjoy playing. So. These, I can freak out on a little bit. Yeah, that's a xylophone. This and this is, one, this is quite old, isn't it? This is Glockenspiel. No, yeah. these are kind of new. Are they? just for a little fairy dust around the stuff. This instrument here was made by my son, yeah. Scott. And um, it is a tongue drum. And by the way, all these are all mic'd up here. Got, you know, everything here, if I decide that I want to play something, or you want to play something, I just hit record over there, and the microphone's in position, it's EQ'd, it's set up, it's blind check, whatever volume I hit at, it's ready to rock. I have to make the music the instruments easy to play, because the lure of MIDI, and of uh, writing music on a computer, if I've been for 20 years, it's so easy, that actual instruments seems like a bit of a bother. So I've made it in here, 
that the actual instruments are really easy to just walk over and play them, I'm liable to actually do that rather than look for a sample. So, with what you've got going on here now, because there's some live cameras, video cameras, yeah. can you tell my viewers, before you phone me out of the house, um, what is Copeland Music? Uh, uh, this is the Sacred Grove, and I have a, a channel, which is just videos that I make for the fun of it. I have buddies come over here and jam, whether it's Snoop Dogg or Ben Harper or Stanley Clark or Les Claypool. I had Primus in here the other night. Uh, a lot of different people come here, and I record these jams. And I've got cameras everywhere, and I cut them up and make little movies. And you'll find them so-and-so at the Sacred Grove. That's what this place is called, the Sacred Grove. You search the Sacred Grove, and you'll find little cool, cool little movies, I think, here. This is kind of cool. This cello here. Not many people understand. Ah. Play it like a guitar. Oh. The great thing about no frets is you can hit any note and then renegotiate. <laughs> this instrument here, look at it. Beautiful. Beautiful instrument. Yeah. Look at that. Okay. Yeah. It's fantastic. How do you think, uh, how old do you think that is? Well, that, I would say it's old. It is about 20 minutes old. It was made about 20 minutes ago in China. Okay, there you go. Bought it brand new. Incredible. Um, and it's a, I, I have no idea whether it's a good quality instrument or not. It's beautiful. Man, it's real pretty. The ones you buy in a store here, like, what's your cheapest cello? Yeah. They're so ugly, but I found this online on eBay, and I had to have it. So do not you... many people understand, appreciate that cello is a really great, great blues instrument. So when you're out on the road, do you find instruments, or do you just go, I all right, you know what I need now? I need a cello. All can found out on the road. Okay. This one here, the Gibson, the sticker in there says, you know, the patent is uh, apostrophe 98. And that's not 1998. And that's not 2098. This guitar is over 100 years old. A little out of tune. I mean, it was in tune when I bought it. I, I tried to sol solder the machine head so it would stay in tune, but it just... It's not a great guitar, but it does have an atmosphere that got something about... I don't know whether it's I know that it's old so that I get a vibe from just handling it or whether it actually has a good sound. It's a little tubby. This here. Stink out it is. It's a little out of tune, but it's a like a it's, the top strings are like the bottom strings are up an octave, so effectively the top strings are down an octave, so your chords. Curved Air in 1974. It was old then. It was an antique then. He regrets it even more now. <laughs> it's a beautiful instrument. Uh, when people come over here, and I've had Stanley Clark, uh, Armand, Les Claypool uh, playing this bass, they'll complain about all this chrome on here, which everybody takes it off. You know, all your jazz bass and P basses, they have this chrome, and everybody gets rid of it. Well, as I did. But then I found it just to restore it to its original glory. It sure is kind of cool looking, but bass player, you know, right, that's what a bass player wants to do his thing. It was designed for a guy to play a plectrum. In fact, all the electric instruments, all your viewers know this, but they're all designed. Leo Fender had no idea what Jimi Hendrix was going to do with that instrument. This is my uh, guitar when I had in college. I did all, all my early work on this instrument here. I actually prefer Stratocaster now, but very sexy guitar. Love it. And uh, every, every household should that. have one. Rumblefish. Yeah. This is kind of cool. It's like a Les Paul. It's like a hollow body Les Paul Jr. The cutaway of a Les Paul. 
has this little single pickup there. It's quite tubby, very th narrow neck, um, but it actually has a cool sound. If you plug it into an amplifier, it has a kind of a tubby sound, but if you put a microphone on it as well, that gives it the click. And uh, if only I could play guitar real great, it would be a beautiful sound. I'm just being humble. Okay. I think I can play guitar real great. Okay, I'm that's it. I think so. We've got it. Thank you very much for letting cool. me uh, see your studio. Cool. Well, thanks for bringing Thomas over here. Okay. Say goodbye. Thanks for having me. Thank sure, you. dude. <laughs> and I'll get out your crib. Thank you. Thanks, man.